Hi, welcome to our segment on 10 10 minute breakfasts. All recipes are geared for one serving. Multiply as needed. Eliminate something that you don't care for. My best recipes were at one time experiments or desperation not having what I needed on hand. Keep notes about the changes that you make and perfect your recipe to suit you. Hope you find the hints at the end helpful. Use the menu to jump to the item you would like to try first. Breakfasts are my favorite meal to cook. They look impressive on the plate and they're easy and cheap. I usually have all the ingredients on hand. They make a quick dinner and are great for guests. Variety can complement your dish. Texture, taste, temperature, and color. For example, the omelet dish has, first, sautéed items, second, fresh items on the top, and third, hot and cold side items. Each can add color, texture, and temperature variety. The oatmeal looks rustic because of the texture of its simple add-ins. The smoothie is cold, and the fruit hides the green healthiness of the spinach for kids. Our first breakfast is going to be French toast. French toast is actually a very easy meal to prepare. As you can see plated here, it's really beautiful. You can use a variety of flavors, syrups, whipping cream, fruits, or peanut butter, whatever you want. One of my tricks with French toast is slicing the bread diagonally as well as just straight across. The diagonal slices are slightly larger and they are a little more impressive on the plate if you have company or a teenager or a husband that likes to eat larger portions. And sometimes it's just nice to have a variety of appearance. The night before you prepare your breakfast, set out all the important things that you need except for the refrigerated items. And then you don't have to think about what's for breakfast at 6 o'clock in the morning. Here you can see a picture of the ingredients that are commonly used, and it's fresh berries from our garden, raspberry syrup to go with the raspberry fruit, whipping cream for the topping if it's desired, milk to add into the eggs for the French toast, vanilla, and cinnamon. I like to set the table before I start cooking because sometimes you get cooking, all of a sudden your meal is prepared and you're ready to plate it and you don't have what you need on the table, such as milk or syrups or things like that to finish off your product. You're going to heat up your pan on medium low as shown in the picture here. Add two eggs, four tablespoons of milk, one half teaspoon cinnamon and one fourth teaspoon vanilla. The cinnamon will be measured first because it's a dry ingredient. The vanilla second because it's wet. Then you don't put the wet spoon from the vanilla into the cinnamon. Now you're going to spray your heated pan with non-stick cooking spray. Dip bread in egg mixture until both sides are covered. Add variety with sourdough, wheat, or whole grain bread. You may not use all the egg mixture but sometimes one egg just isn't quite enough, depending on the size of your egg. Once the bread is golden, about two minutes, flip the bread. Another two minutes on the other side until it's golden too. Plate and serve. Add toppings to dress and impress. See your berries add a lot of style. Pour some extra oohs and ahs. Shake up a can of whipping cream for about 30 seconds. Doesn't that look amazing? You can use butter and powdered sugar, flavored syrups, berries and whipping cream, peanut butter and syrup. You could use a variety of anything you like. Our second breakfast is scrambled eggs and breakfast meat. You can use any variety of meat in this recipe you want. The plated one has steak from last night's grill. You could use ham, 
bacon, sausage, whatever you like. The night before, if you're going to use a ham steak, take it out of the freezer and put it in the fridge to thaw. Get all the non-perishable items out and put them on the counter. When you're ready to start cooking, set out all the ingredients. I usually use just one egg, but you can use two. Get your ham steak out of the fridge, your milk, and your salsa, or you could use salt and pepper, and your slice of bread for toast. I like to set the table before I start cooking. You can feel the heat coming off the pan if you put your hand just a couple of inches above it, but don't touch the pan directly. Warm your frying pan on medium-low heat. Make sure the pan is hot before you put your ingredients in. Add non-stick cooking spray or butter to the bottom of the heated pan. Whisk two eggs and four tablespoons of milk in a bowl with a fork. Pour the milk and the egg mixture into the heated pan. When the eggs are about one third of the way cooked, they'll start to look a little bit glossy. Move the eggs to one side of the pan and make room for the breakfast meat. Place the meat in the pan. Cook for about two more minutes. Put the bread in the toaster. Flip the breakfast meat and stir the eggs. Once the toaster is done, butter the bread, plate the toast, the eggs, the breakfast meat. You can serve this breakfast with salsa or salt and pepper. Add a glass of milk, a glass of any kind of juice you like, and you've got a great breakfast. This is a wonderful breakfast for children. They like this one. Number three, pancakes. Pancakes are an excellent inexpensive way to have a good hearty breakfast. Two variations of the pancakes is one is using Krusty's buttermilk pancake mix and the other is Kodiak whole wheat pancake mix. Both of these are extremely inexpensive. On your buttermilk pancake mix you can see by the packaging that you get 77 servings in this one package. It usually has a long shelf life, so this is something to keep on hand. And the very nicest point is that you add nothing but your liquid. In this picture, we have the most common variety of things used for pancakes. We have peanut butter, syrup, pancake mix that has everything except your water or seltzer water in it, your frying pan, your measuring container, your spatula, and your little whisk. The seltzer water helps make the pancake light and fluffy. And the nice thing is, it's equal amounts of pancake mix and seltzer water. I like using the little hot chocolate mug with the handle because it gives me control while I'm stirring and pouring. Heat your pan on medium low. As soon as the pan is ready, you're going to spray the pan with nonstick spray. I like to use equal parts of the pancake mix and seltzer water. I put one half cup of pancake mix leveled in the cup and pour it in. This is like a hot chocolate cup. Then I pour an equal amount of the seltzer water in the cup and gently whisk it. Don't over stir. The seltzer water makes the ingredients in the pancake mix light and fluffy. It's a, an excellent trick for making fantastic pancakes and waffles. After you've gently mixed it, you're going to put three cakes. You can do just one large cake if you'd like, but it does take just a moment more to cook. As soon as the edges become firm and pulled away from not looking liquidy, then you're going to check your pancake. If it's golden, then you're going to turn it over with your spatula. Here we have the pancakes plated. And in this particular picture, we have peanut butter and syrup. Pancakes can be enjoyed with butter and powdered sugar, flavored syrups, berries and whipping cream, and peanut butter and jam. Breakfast number four, fried eggs and potatoes. 
we have two variations of the potatoes. The night before, I take one cup of frozen hash browns and put them in a baggie and allow them to thaw in the refrigerator overnight. Then I'm going to heat up my pan to medium low and spray with my nonstick spray. Give them plenty of time to brown. Don't keep stirring them. Just lift up one or two from the side. See if they're golden before you turn them. The second option is leftover mashed potatoes from the night before. I simply put these mashed potatoes in a Ziploc bag, smash them flat, and then I cut them with scissors. And in this particular situation, I'm cutting them in four sections. After the pan is hot, spray it with nonstick spray. Add the potatoes to your first heated pan. Heat the potato cakes until they're golden on the underside and then flip it. It takes about three minutes. Heat three minutes until they're golden. Now it's time to add the egg to the second pan. You're going to spray the heated pan with nonstick spray add your egg and top it with pepper. If you hold the egg close to the frying pan, it usually gets a more uniform shape. This is the time you push your toaster down. Now you can see your egg is starting to form, the edges seem cooked, and you're going to gently flip it with your spatula. When the toast pops up, butter it, and your potatoes and your eggs should be done. Another variation on this is to use your add-ins. Warm up two half strips of bacon in the microwave for 30 seconds, or warm up two sausages for 30 seconds, or change up your bread by using nice sourdough or add jam to your toast. Breakfast number five, waffles. This is a very fun breakfast. Quite a few years ago, my son had a birthday party and we had waffles for dinner and it was a huge hit. Everybody loved it. You're going to heat up your grill. I put mine on as high as it will go until the light turns off. The next step is very important. Quasinar waffle grill takes only one third cup of the waffle mix. If you make one half cup as stated on the waffle mix, it will spill all over the sides of your grill and make a huge mess. Here we have the ingredients for this particular recipe of the waffle. You're going to have one third of a cup of the dry pancake mix, your seltzer water, equal parts, and we're going to plate it today with bacon and blueberries and syrup. Measure one third level cup of waffle mix, not a half. You need to make sure that your measurement is exact. Use the back of a butter knife to level the measuring cup. Put one third cup of the mix in a cocoa cup and one third cup of seltzer water. You can use cold tap water in a pinch, but the seltzer water adds airiness to your waffle. Gently whisk the mix and the seltzer water together. If using a small whisk or a fork, this should take less than 10 seconds, just enough to combine the ingredients. If you add too much mix in your waffle iron, it will spill over the sides and make a big mess. Your waffle iron may be different than mine. Spray and heat the griddle and use a spatula to pour the mix right in the middle of the griddle. Use a cocoa cup handle to hold the cup steady. After you get it on the grill, we're going to put two slices of bacon on the very top. Don't forget your texture, taste, temperature, and color. Close the waffle iron. My old waffle iron took three minutes to cook. My current waffle iron takes 2 minutes and 10 seconds to cook. You will need to experiment to find the exact time for your iron. 
and the desired crispness of your waffle. I like my waffle done, but my husband likes his left on an extra 10 seconds to make it a little crispier. Here you can see that the cooked bacon is part of the waffle. This adds a nice surprise and a salty, sweet taste to the finished product. Plate the waffle and add your toppings. Maybe a sweet blueberry syrup, some sweet blueberries, a sprinkle of powdered sugar, or go all out and add all three like we've done here. Or you can shake a can of whipping cream up for 30 seconds and make a scrumptious waffle instead. Here you have it. Enough said. Another variation is to make this waffle for dinner. In our example here, we've cut out some parchment paper in the shape of a snowflake and liberally sprinkled powdered sugar on the plate. It's a great, relatively mess-free art project. Do it with the kids and have fun with a presentation for your guests. Breakfast meal six. Using your add-ins makes this omelet very doable. Yes, in 10 minutes or less. This is an overview of what we'll do. Let's break it down step by step. Want to be a pro? Well, here we go. We pre-cook the meat and freeze it along with the cilantro and other tasty add-ins. For this recipe, we'll pull a baggie of crumbled bacon. We'll also snap off a thumb-sized piece of frozen cilantro and cut it thinly into slivers using our kitchen shears. When you're ready to start cooking, you're going to set out all of your ingredients. One egg, the meat of your choice, we'll use crumbled bacon in this particular recipe. Cut up all ingredients that will saute and be inside the omelet. Cut up all the ingredients that will be cooked and fresh on the outside of the omelet. Put the toast in the toaster, but don't push it down. In a smaller pan, Add six mushrooms coarsely chopped, one green onion sliced, one quarter cup of frozen crumbled bacon add-ins. Break off a one inch square piece of frozen cilantro add-ins and sliver it with your kitchen shears. Add one tablespoon of butter in the center. On your chopping block, cut up a snack sized cheddar cheese. Wedge one quarter of the tomato, thinly slice, a fourth of an avocado. It is important that you only whisk one, not two eggs, and only two tablespoons of water, not milk, until this is nice and frothy. Why? The omelet is a delicate and ornate dish, so two eggs or milk will make it too heavy. You're going to heat two pans. The smaller pan is approximately six to eight inches for the omelet filling and the larger pan is 11 inches for the omelet egg mix. Heat both pans and once they're heated up add nonstick spray to both. Be sure that the larger pan is sprayed around the sides of the pan also, not just on the flat surface or your delicate egg won't release from the pan. The smaller pan will be on medium heat and will cook the items that will go inside the omelet. The larger pan will need to be on medium low heat instead so that it slowly cooks the delicate egg. Saute the first pan and heat up your second pan. Stir the small pan ingredients together. Pour frothy egg into your 11 inch pan and roll the pan gently to cover the bottom evenly. As you roll the pan, some of the egg will get on the sides of the pan. This is why it's important to spray both the bottom and the sides before you add the egg. Once the egg sides start to get a little flaky, like they are starting to dry out a little, this is how the egg is going to come off of the pan and be plated. Add the ingredients in one half of the egg. Then add the cheese cubes. 
Gently use the spatula to pull the egg away from the sides of the pan. Flip the empty half of the egg onto the top of the filled half of the egg. You may need two spatulas to turn it. If the flipped half of the egg tears, like you can see in the picture, don't worry about it. You won't be able to see it when it is plated. Put your plate on the top of the pan. Use one hand to support the plate and one hand to hold the handle of the pan. Be careful, the pan is hot. Now flip the pan over onto the plate quickly. Remove the pan and gently adjust your omelet so it lays on the plate the way you'd like. Put bread in toaster. While it is toasting, add your omelet toppings and your orange slices on the side. Once the toaster is done, butter the bread. Here you can see that we added a pop of color with the tomato wedges and the avocado topping. This is paired nicely with two slices of orange and a fruit juice. So let's assess. How many textures can you count on this photograph in this amazing omelet breakfast? Can you taste it? Notice how half is hot and half is cold. What is the predominant color? What color does your eye first draw to? You successfully analyzed the texture, taste, and temperature and color of this incredible breakfast. After you've mastered this recipe, invite a friend over for a tasty, delicate, impressive meal. Breakfast number seven, bagels and fruit cup. This is a pretty straightforward recipe and it's a great choice when children are helping since there's no hot stove and no sharp knife. Cutting the cantaloupe into a wedge and using the blueberries as a garnish adds a nice touch. Or slice up a few fruits and add yogurt on the top to make it really pop. Here in this picture we have bananas, apples in the middle with skins on for texture and flavor, and red grapes, a big dollop of colorful yogurt, and we can top the fruit with some buttery cashews. You can use peanuts or any other choice of nuts if you prefer to add some salty or sweet to this dish or sprinkle some granola for a chewier texture. To make this fruit cup dairy free, use a tablespoon of concentrated orange juice instead of yogurt. The concentrated orange juice gives it a nice tangy flavor. Use coconut here instead of nuts, making this an island favorite. Here we have our bagel and fruit plate on two different place settings. Either one can change the color of the meal experience. Ramp up the temperature and texture by toasting the bagel to draw out the flavors, like a blissful blueberry in this bagel. If you prefer something heartier than cream cheese, use peanut butter and jam for your breakfast P, B, and J. Breakfast number eight is oatmeal. Oatmeal is a favorite at our house, especially on a cold winter morning. The most common way we have the oatmeal is just plain regular oatmeal. I always use old-fashioned oats. I do not use the quick. It only takes five minutes to cook and it turns out perfect every time. Collect all your ingredients. On the right, you see a typical breakfast setting. My husband prefers oatmeal with brown sugar. I add a little bowl with an ice cube to the meal, and if he's in a hurry and the oatmeal is too hot, he can place the ice cube into his oatmeal until it's the temperature he wants, and then he puts the little ice cube back in the bowl. Always make sure that your pan is bigger than you need it to be. Don't use a tiny pan. First of all, we're going to place one cup of water in the pan and turn the stove on medium high. Add a pinch of salt, or an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Once the water is boiling, sprinkle the oatmeal in. Turn the burner down to low so it is barely boiling. The secret to good oatmeal is don't stir it. Cook your oats for five minutes. If making toast, pop your toast down after two minutes or plate your store-bought muffins. Do not cover the oatmeal. Here are two examples 
of how I plate oatmeal. One has toast and one has banana muffins. If you want to try making this oatmeal special, add one quarter of a baking apple, cubed and unpeeled for a pretty color, two tablespoons of walnut chunks or broken walnuts, and one scoop or one tablespoon of brown sugar. If you desire, you can also add one half teaspoon of cinnamon. This reminds me of apple crumble or apple crisp. Breakfast number nine, breakfast burrito. These are the key steps that it'll take to make your breakfast burrito. Let's look at them in greater detail. You're going to preheat your pan on medium heat, and then you're going to spray the pan with nonstick spray. Put one quarter of a cup of pre-cooked ground sausage from your frozen add-ins container in the pan. Add one tablespoon of taco spice, one quarter of a green pepper that's cut thinly. This can be frozen and pulled from your add-ins container. And then you're also going to add one quarter of a small onion, also cut in thin strips, which can also be pulled from your add-ins freezer container. Saute the ingredients until the onion becomes translucent. It's about four minutes. Put your tortilla on the plate while it's still cold from the refrigerator. Place the filling from the frying pan down the middle of the tortilla. Sprinkle it with a little cheese, top it with salsa, and fold over the sides of the tortilla. And microwave the dish for 20 to 40 seconds until the tortilla is hot. Any juice will do, but pineapple and orange juice adds great color and a zesty taste. You can add in a couple of tablespoons of black beans to your breakfast burrito just before the cheese if you want to make this meal a little more robust. Breakfast number 10, smoothies. This recipe is one packed cup of spinach, one small to medium frozen fresh banana, one half cup green grapes, one package of stevia in the raw sprinkled on top of the add-ins, and add one half cup of fruit juice. We used mango in our example here. You have to have at least one half of a cup per serving of liquid for it to blend properly since most of our add-ins are frozen. Here are a couple of examples of alternate add-ins. We have fresh spinach and blueberries from our garden. Take any fruit you like, wash it, and toss the extra in a bag to put in the freezer for smoothies. Future treats for later. Oh no, my bananas are too ripe. Hmm, I think I can taste some delicious smoothies. A frozen banana adds a smoother texture to the smoothie without little chunks of ice cubes. In this picture, I've taken the, my ripe bananas. I put one banana in each bag. I insert my butter knife and I slice the banana. Then I just take the knife out, push out the air and seal it. And I add it to my add-ins container for my smoothies. Notice the painter's tape on the container? Attach the tape when the container is at room temperature, but tuck in one of the edges. This will make it easier to remove the label before washing the container. The thing I like about this is when I go to the freezer, everything I want is right there for my smoothie. And I can just pull it out, put it on the counter, decide what kind of smoothie I want for the day, and then put it back in the freezer. This smoothie container includes bananas, green grapes, spinach, blueberries, red grapes. Put your stevia in a Ziploc bag before putting it in the container so that you have everything you need except the juice in one spot. Most of my recipes are geared for one person. 
but today I've tripled the ingredients to make three smoothies for three people. I put the spinach in first since it's the lightest item. Then I weigh it down with the banana and the grapes. You can add different fruits to adjust the taste. Next I'm going to use just one packet of stevia in the raw as a sweetener. The little stevia package is taped to the front of the blender so that you can see what it looks like. A little bit goes a long way, so you don't need very much stevia. We need one half cup of liquid for each smoothie. Since I'm making three today, I added one and a half cups of mango juice. You'll notice that I use a dot of nail polish on the front of my blender to mark the one cup mark and the two cup line. The 12 ounce or the one and a half cup line is for a tall glass. If you go over the line with your add-ins, you know that you'll need two glasses to serve it in. We've got all the ingredients in. We'll put the lid on securely and now we are ready to blend. Turn your blender on smoothie or the equivalent setting. When it's completely blended, about two minutes, turn off the blender, remove the lid, and use a teaspoon to remove a taste test worth of the mixture. See if you like the taste or if you want to add something else. If you do, place the lid back on and blend it again. Now you have a delicious, nutritious breakfast. My blender is about half full, so I've got three smoothies worth. This is an excellent grab-and-go breakfast. It fits nicely in a water bottle if you need to run out the door. Or you can plate it for a relaxing morning moment, or make a smoothie for a great late-night treat. Any time of day or night, smoothies are a fun way to experiment and practice with different flavor combinations that you can adjust to meet your nutritional needs. Enjoy. Our bonus recipe is crustless quiche. We often use this recipe for holiday breakfasts. This recipe is a bonus recipe because it does take longer than 10 minutes to cook, but it is easy to prepare and very delightful. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. This is an overview of the quiche from start to finish. Now let's walk through it. Ingredients. Four ounces of shredded cheese, any kind, jack, Swiss, or cheddar, etc. Seven or eight slices of bacon, and the bacon will be cooked and crumbled, and I get my bacon out of my add-ins container. I use one half cup cooked crumbled bacon. Four eggs, one fourth of an onion wedged, one half cup of flour, two tablespoons of butter or margarine, one and a half cup milk, one fourth teaspoon salt, one eighth teaspoon pepper. Butter your quiche dish. A deep pie plate may be used. Sprinkle dish with the cheese in the bottom and then sprinkle it with the bacon and set the pie plate aside. In the blender, combine your milk, eggs, onion, flour, salt, and pepper. Blend for one minute and pour the ingredients gently over the cheese and the bacon in the quiche dish. I put cornbread in the oven at the same time with the quiche so they both come out at the same time and the cornbread is hot and delicious with melted butter and jam. Test for doneness by using a toothpick similar to testing a cake. Let stand for five minutes to set and then serve immediately. Ingredients can be prepared ahead of time 
and I suggest measuring out the ingredients except for the refrigerated items the night before to make prep time a cinch in the morning. Here we have two different variations of the plated crustless quiche. One fruit cup added on the white dish has bananas, strawberries, apples, orange, and fresh coconut. I have also put one tablespoon of concentrated orange juice on the fruit to keep it from discoloring. On the Christmas plate, we have strawberries with a little powdered sugar on top, hot cornbread, jam and butter, and some fresh peppers. You can see how uniquely different each place setting is by just changing the dinnerware. I want breakfast time to be a cinch. Everything is prepared ahead of time. I spend a little time preparing my sausage, my sausage links and my ground sausage, my bacon, my ham, so that everything is ready. When I'm preparing to make breakfast, everything is in my add-ins container. Smoothie prep is quick and easy. When my fresh fruit or spinach starts to wilt, I freeze what I'm not going to use right away while it's still fresh. Freeze grapes, bananas, blueberries, and spinach ahead of time. Cilantro is an inexpensive way to add flavor. I wash my cilantro, take the stems off, pat it dry with a paper towel, add it to the baggie, smash it flat, label it, and I put it in the freezer with my add-ins. Now I'm going to show you how to create serving size portions with a ham steak. As you can see, this is my ham steak and I've marked with a marker so that you can see what I'm thinking as to where I want my steaks to be. And the parts that have the asterisk, those will be the cubed pieces of ham. After I've cut my steak the way I want it, I put it in my portion bags and label it. I can pull these out for my add-ins for any breakfast to make it a cinch. And as you can see, I have multiple breakfasts available. This will last for a couple of months. I cook my sausage on medium heat and I continue to break it up kind of like hamburger while it cooks until it's completely cooked. I let it cool and I add it to my little sandwich bags. As you can see here, one pound of this sausage made nine different one quarter cup portions for meals. I freeze the meat. I take it out. It's already cooked, so the only thing I have to do is warm it up. I turn my pan on medium heat until it's hot. I spray the pan with Pam and I put the cooked sausage straight from the freezer and put it in the pan. I warm it up and I add one tablespoon of the taco spice to my pre-cooked meat for my breakfast burrito. I cook a pound or two of the bacon slices. Each slice is cut in half, makes it easier to work with, and it looks a little more impressive on the plate. It's a good idea to do this when your kids are at school, because when they smell the bacon cooking, they can eat a couple of pounds just as a snack. I cook about one pound of bacon that I cut in about one half inch pieces. And as soon as it's cooked, then I put it on a paper towel and I measure it out in one quarter cup measures for my add-ins or one half cup measures for my quiche. I put my meat and cilantro in one container of my add-ins. The meat is in one container the fruit is in another. Put all the ham steaks, ham cubes, and bacon together. You could even add the cilantro. Put all the smoothie items together in the same container. That way, when you go to pull out the items that you'll need, it's easy to see what you have left and what you need to replace. Be sure to take out and completely wash and dry the containers from time to time. When I make French toast, I like to cut the bread in different ways. 
It just adds a little variety. I cut some pieces diagonally and some pieces just normal slice. And then I freeze them, usually two slices per bag. And then I just freeze it until I need it. Add variety with sourdough or wheat or whole grain breads. In this picture, you can see that different cheeses make a difference in what you make. The taste. Some cheeses have a mild, medium, or a sharp cheese taste. The texture. Some melt better than others. The temperature. Kobe Jack smoked cheese. And the color. Some cheeses have a light color, and cheddar cheese adds a pop of color. I use the snack size bag of cheese when I'm making cube cheese for my omelet. This cheese stores very well and holds up. It doesn't go bad as quickly as the packaged cheese. Use the four cheese Mexican blend for cheese in your breakfast burritos. Or I use the shredded cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese for my quiche. Here's a picture of my taco seasoning container. On one side, you'll notice that I use a Sharpie to put the instructions in a larger type. That way, it's quick and easy, and I don't have to hunt for my glasses. I also note how much I use to make bean dip a family favorite. This section is to help you see the ambiance added to a meal. Each individual place setting has a different feel. Sometimes I allow the grandchildren to help set the table and I ask them to go around the house and find unusual things that they think might be interesting on the table. Here are some other pictures and ideas of how you can plate your food. Write down on paper or in your phone any items that you need to get next time you go to the store. You don't need to buy everything at once. Make bacon one week and sausage another. Be creative. Try different things. Set out non-perishable items, your tools, your pan. Do this the night before and make a big difference in your meal prep. You may need more than 10 minutes for your new breakfast menu until you have made it a few times. Use a timer on your phone or your oven and write down how long it took your oven or your burner. Not all stoves are the same. Let your children help you in the kitchen. My mom helped me love cooking by encouraging my brothers and sisters and me to help in the kitchen. There were 11 of us. My mom was amazing. Then share with us what items you decided to make.